visit to Bodegas Luis Perez delivers everything you'd expect from a visit to a winery and does it in style. The place is grand, but the family's love for tradition and the terroir makes it not feel at all pretentious. Willy Perez explains every detail, not only of the development and growth of the company, but also of the history and development of winemaking in the region. Having had hands of involvement in every step of the process, including very rustic manual labor, has left a profound imprint on him, and it really shines through. There is passion and commitment in every explanation, in every description, but the most important of this family is to create a stronger bond between the wine and the soil from which it grows. So this is the typical system of pruning in El Marco de Jerez. It's very interesting even this, these days because we are really, you know, having really big problems in the wine world mm -hmm. with uh, fungus, as they say, hongos de madera. Right, yes. In all, all the fungus. plants, in all the vines, really bad. So this is really good. Uh, the Bara y Pulgar, the system of pruning, traditional, really, you know, ancient for mm -hmm. uh, Marco de Jerez, because you just need to cut, you know, two or three times the plant. In Cordon Doble, for example, you need to cut at least 12 times, mm. you know? Here, you have all your system here in this, this uh, Bara mm -hmm. has one year. It's from the 2019. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna have all the green parts again, this year from here for all the buds yeah you know and then once you harvest and then you need to prune again you put one time and leave another one so one of the main things is to follow the path of the cuts because once you cut the plant here in the pruning you have a scar here okay so the plant is like recovering mm -hmm. all the, the, the scar with, uh, you know, how do you say, cicatriz. Yeah, yeah, so it's the, scar, yeah. The, it, it tienes un impedimento para el paso de la savia. Mm -hmm. Then if you cut here, this part we call seco, like dry, like okay. dead. And then you have all the life here, mm. the savia. Then as you can see, you have this vara coming from the other from side. The other side. Mm. And then you need to spin and spin, leaving this green part and dyed plant. Mm. Yeah, you can, you can see it here, it's, it's growing, you know, like yeah, if turning you, round. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the spinning thing mm. is because you are all the time cutting the same place. Mm. And the plant is spinning, spinning. This is the para y pulgar. Una vara larga, one vara y un pulgar. This winery reaches for the stars while maintaining a humility and a simple clarity of purpose that one can feel in their wines. They are busy with new ideas and experiments and I can't wait to get tasting because Bodegas Luis Perez always knows where it's going and the rest tend to follow. We've been uh, in the vineyard before, we've been in the winery and we can tell that the focus of your wines is uh, in the, in, the, in the fruit, in the vineyard. So yep. what a better place than this to, to taste it's your wine. Perfect, it's perfect. And you deserve it after <laughs> this hard <laughs> explanation. So we have a selection here. This is mm -hmm. more or less because we have like twice of these wines, but this is really confusing. We have here like a white, rosé and red wine made from Tintilla. This is the or medium range and this is a sherry. Mm -hmm. But I think we should try three wines that represent the winery. Fantastic. The first one is El Muelle de Olaso. The Olaso is a, a, a port that, that used to be in San Luca. Uh -huh. And this is a white wine. So this is made from the grapes of El Corregidor, the, the vineyard we, 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 we've been before. And it's in a way between a sherry and a white wine. 
In fact, it's closer to a white wine because it's quite fruity. Mm -hmm. And as I told you, I'm living from the terra, you know? But it has two or three months of Crianza Biologica. Right. Just a touch, you know, to give it a sherry taste. Mm. But just a little, because it's in fact, uh, the people that don't know that has Crianza Biologica is not gonna notice, you know? It's more like a white wine. So, as you can see, the color is uh, it's beautiful right now with the sun, it's shining. And if you smell it, it's quite ripe fruit. Can you notice a little bit the Crianza Biologica, the sensation of cabezuelas, which is the diet list that mm. fell, falls from the Crianza Biologica in the bottom of the cask. And it's, and it's even more noticeable in mouth, mm. because the, the nose is really fruity, you've got the queens, you've got the strong fruit, the pineapple, as you said. Um, and then in the mouth you get that final dryness. Or yeah, almost, that's... And that, that um, um, like a pungency of the acetaldehyde. Yeah. But just, just, just a slight. Little. Yeah. It's fantastic. That's a it's perfect beautiful. explanation what uh, El Moye is. Mm. That sensation of freshness or a little bitterness, you mm. know, like this right. almond. Okay. The next wine is a red. Mm -hmm. It's a tintilla. And we work in different vineyards, we have different single parcel that make the things easier. We're gonna drink Valvaina. For us, the Tintilla is a grape that works really well here because it's a native grape. But the Tintilla was a new grape for me mm. and in fact it was too oaky, too much oak right. in, the, in the wine for me. So with the years, we, you know, remove the oak and start to use in uh, you know, old oak, mm -hmm. used oak, and to put just a little of crianza in touch. the wine mm -hmm. to keep the, the flavor pure, you know? And you drink, you, you can smell this, it is a rosa. Yeah, rose. Rose. It's quite soft, quite it's very elegant. Aromatic. Very aromatic, very elegant. It comes from the Atlantic Ocean, so we want to preserve this you know, identity. So you can drink this quite easily. You feel the acidity quite fresh. The saltiness is there, so. The tines are very, very gentle. Yeah. So very, very soft. And Alex, for me, this is a Calcaro's red. Okay, you can feel the Alvariza here. Mm. It makes sense then why you've made three different wines, same grape variety, yeah. same <laughs> process, but different vineyards. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, uh, I think I would recommend anyone to do a, a, a horizontal tasting or a yeah. comparative tasting very with, academic. The, with the three. Yeah, yeah very yeah. academic. Because same. if it's the same process, it's the same everything, mm. for people to understand that the terroir is quite important, even if you have the same grape, and you know, very academic. So, Alex, would you like to try the last one? Maybe this is, for me, quite, quite, you know, the special one. It is very special indeed. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know of any winery in Jerez that does Fino without fortifying. Uh, I don't know, I know either. In Montilla is, is, is yeah, done, yeah. But, uh, but not in, in Jerez. This, in fact, uh, used to be how the sherry is made in the mm. past. We never fortified the, the, the high class sherry, we were never fortified. Mm -hmm. And we need to recover this, you know, terra sherry, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So this is a blend. It's not Criadera San Soleras, because as you know, you have Criadera San Soleras, the youngest wine is in the top place, mm -hmm. and then the Solera is the oldest yes. wine, and then you are racking, you know, yes. so I'm blending. But here you have different gears. We have here 2017, 2016, 15, 14, and 13, but blended in a knowing, you know, proportion. I know I say two cask of 2013, one cask of 15, I'm and sorry. I blend because this is uh, the entry level of the sherries, mm -hmm. because the top, 
the high end of the winery is Barajuela, which is one year, mm -hmm. one parcel. Okay, this is a blend between different parcels and different years. And you know, if you take your glass, as you can see, this is the medium, the average here is four years of Crianza Biologica, more or less four and a half, mm -hmm. maybe five. <clears throat> but as, as I told you, this is not quite important for me. The main thing is that we need to preserve some fruit here. Even if it's a sherry, you need to have this apricot you're going to taste right now. And the chalky sensation. As you can drink, this is like a... different. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, you have, you know, tons of fruit there. Okay, this is definitely different. Yeah, yeah. Because you get uh, that dryness of the fino, uh, yeah. very dry, but at the same time, a lot more fruit. Yeah, a lot. Wow. That's because when you reach naturally the concentration, you you not only have the 15% of alcohol, you're gonna have 15% of everything. The fruit, the the acidity, the terroir, the mm. mineral factor. You know this. This is quite important for me. And you can't really feel four years or five years of Crianza Biologica because you have this wine with really high concentration and the Crianza Biologica, you can feel it because the wine, the fruit is so intense mm. that don't let the Crianza Biologica say, I'm yes, here, you know? Yes. Sometimes I say, and I think it's very important for the people that is watching us right now in the TV, the sherry is a white wine. If you find it alcoholic, it's because it's alcoholic. If you find it bitter, it's because it's bitter. <clears throat> some cherries are really good, some cherries obviously are not that good, but you need to look for the balance. Always, it's for me the thing. So because if you like it, it's because it's the wine is balanced. So mm. Of course, this is an the same opinion. What well, you said is key, that it is a wine. Uh, and it has to be treated a, a, as a wine. It's yep. not a spirit, it's not a liquor. Yeah, that's, uh, it, that's it's the point. A, a wine that should be enjoyed as a wine, uh, you know, pairing with food, it's an aperitif. Uh, each, each sherry obviously has, uh, you know, better uses than others or, or different uses than others, but it is a wine. Yeah, of course. It should be. And a beautiful wine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, I, ho I hope you have enjoyed. It's been fantastic. I mean, this trip uh, here. W w what I, 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 I'd say about uh, Bodegas Luis Pérez is that you try to do things differently and, uh, you know, you, you achieved that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. And, and, uh, and the final products are fantastic and definitely different. So for any wine, uh, wine aficionado, uh, your, your winery is definitely one to, to, to me. Thank you, thank you. It's just another point of view. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. So that, that's the point for the new era for cherries. Mm. You, can, you can have the really classic cherries that are really, really good, but you can have another path, you know, more with a really strong link mm. with the terroir. I think uh, you, you, you've achieved. <laughs> and you, you, you are creating a, a trend, which is, is very important. We hope. Cheers. Alex. This is the end of our series. We hope you enjoyed it. There will be plenty of time for more exciting getaways. But now, it's time to stay home. Until next time, stay safe.